hello and welcome to me um <laughs> my name is Miranda and today I'm going to be doing my September wrap up where I read some books shall we have a look at the books that I read some of them they aren't all here we so we're going to talk about all the books that I read in September starting with Small Pleasures by Claire Chambers so if you've seen um my <laughs> reading vlog that I did when I went on holiday um, I talked about this quite a lot because that was what I was reading at the time um, and I so basically this is about um, a woman it is about a woman called Jean um, and she is living in um, a kind of like suburban town um, near London in the late 1950s um, she is unmarried she looks after her aged mother um, and she is a journalist in the kind of local newspaper um, and she does all the sort of like boring not very exciting stories but then she gets a letter from a reader um, who claims to have had a virgin birth um, and she goes on to investigate it um, and that's basically the book it follows her getting to know the family basically she gets gradually more kind of involved with them until it all gets a little bit messy um and things get complicated basically so this is like the perfect holiday read it's very easy to read um very kind of simple prose um and very in like <laughs> characters that are very easy to get invested in um and i really enjoyed seeing like their different relationships and everything um and i thought they were really really well done however <laughs> Um, as you will remember if you've seen my vlog, you might not remember, you might have forgotten, I don't know. Um, the end of this book really um, takes a turn and I, I still don't know how to feel about it, to be honest. And obviously I can't talk about it without spoiling it, um, but it kind of, it made me realise that I really, really, really cared about the characters um, and that I was incredibly invested in them and their happiness, um, which I didn't realise um, before the ending. So I'm really gr grateful for that realisation because um, she does write these characters so incredibly well. But also I don't think the ending was necessary um, and it did kind of take away from the book a bit for me. Um, I'm still, like I said, I'm still not sure how I feel about it. Um, it's very much mixed feelings. This was an interesting one. I'm really glad I read it and I did really, really enjoy it. Um, and I would recommend it if you want something um, that's quite easy to read, um, very character driven um, and very much about like family and um, yeah, just about people's relationships with, with each other and how complicated those relationships can be. Then I read Ask Again Yes by Mary Beth Keane. Um, this was a kind of similar um, vibe in the sense that it is about um, two families um, in the suburbs of New York um, and it follows their lives kind of throughout like from about the 70s up until um, the present day um, and it follows how their lives intersect and how um, there are two children especially who it follows who have incredibly good friends um, and then um, there is a really tragic incident that happens between these families and um, the two children, two friends, are kind of, um, they're forced to part ways. And this was just the kind of book that I love where you literally just get to follow a bunch of people um, and their lives. Like that's really, that's it. There aren't, there isn't much plot, but especially like with the children, I mean, you follow them from like when, literally when they are born to up until the point where they're like in their fifties and they have like kids of their own um and it it just like you really get to know the characters um and I just I do just love that like just getting to spend time with people in book form I don't think this was anything like particularly remarkable in any way um um it's already kind of fading for me but at the time I was really really invested in the characters um and I really enjoyed it I really loved the um, discussions of like mental health um, and family and kind of um, passing things on to um, your children and sort of intergenerational like 
um, experiences and trauma traumatic experiences particularly. I thought that all that was really well done. Um, and also there's a lot about like what makes a family and what makes a, a parent. Um, and that was all very emotional. The way that she like writes about these people's emotions is incredibly powerful. Um, and I really, I just felt, I felt for them. And at the end, I found the end really, really emotional. Um, basically for all the opposite reasons <laughs> to Small Pleasures. Um, yeah, and it, it's just like, it's just an account of a life really. Um, and well, several lives. It's really good. I really, really enjoyed it. And again, it's like a good one for holiday because it's not that difficult to read. It's very easy to like get into. So yeah, I really enjoyed that. Then I read something quite different. Um, so I read um, this little poetry collection um, called Teaching My Mother How to Give Birth um, by Wharton Shire. And she was born in Kenya um, to Somali parents um, and then moved to the UK when she was like very, very small. So um, this is a lot about like, um, well, it has elements of her personal experience, but what I found really interesting about this particularly was how she writes about like imagined people. So each poem is kind of like a little short story, which is really cool. So she takes like lots of different perspectives here. Um, and I really, really enjoyed that. Um, especially again, cause they're like tiny snapshots of like a life that she has just like imagined and conjured up for you. Um, and she really doesn't like, she doesn't use unnecessary words. It's very like sparse and really brutal. Um, and yeah, it's very, very effective because you're not like caught up in loads of excess words. It's like very short things um, and very to the point. I found this like really powerful and I think um, it's definitely one that I would recommend. Um, it's like literally about 40 pages long. Um, yeah, not even that, like 35. So um, it's very short and yeah, but like packs a punch. Then I listened to two audiobooks. Um, the first was When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole, um, which is a thriller about um, gentrification in New York. So you follow um, a woman called Sydney who is, I think she's about 30, um, and she has returned to her like childhood neighbourhood in New York um, because of, I think, um, a breakup, you're told at the beginning. Um, and basically she goes back and she finds that um, a lot of her neighbours that she knew from when she was a child have been um, forced out by like rising um, rent and rising um, property tax. Um, and like, over the course of like the first half of the book, probably the first two thirds ish, um, it's about her kind of community um, gradually being sort of like chipped away and replaced by um, white middle class people. And the thriller aspect of this um, kind of plays on the fact that um, what Sydney is most familiar with and like her home is being taken away from her. But not just not just taken away from her, like it's um, being replaced by something that is like almost the same and that people are saying is the same. Um, but you know is not right. Um, is that kind of like it's similar to the trope of um you know you're like a family member being abducted by aliens and being replaced by someone and them almost being right but not quite it's set, like playing with that kind of notion of familiarity and um and i mean gaslighting to be honest like it feels like everybody is gaslighting sydney because she is seeing these patterns of people being um you know, people just disappearing and um, being replaced by middle class, rich, white families. Um, and there is supposedly nothing that she can do about it and supposedly no kind of pattern to it, but she sees all of the links. Nobody's understanding why this is so like distressing to her. Um, and what is brilliant about this book, I think, is that you like the discomfort and the like the horror that you feel is so palpable like the the way that Alyssa Cole writes the kind of like the the like growing tension for the first sort of two-thirds of this book before everything 
kicks off um and like shit really does hit the fan at the end but for the first part it's like the slow building up of tension and just a feeling of general like wrongness and terror from um the fact that everything you know that she knows and everything that is familiar to her is being taken away and nobody understands why that hurts her and why that is so terrifying to her i think the way that she kind of writes that experience of um like everyday racism and racist encounters and um like the the real life lived experience of um people in like gentrified areas the way that she writes that as a thriller is so clever because there are like a lot of classic tropes like a lot of kind of gothic um tropes and um a lot of a lot of classic horror tropes and like i said it is very much about like gaslighting um and it feels incredibly psychological the horror um but no less real for that um like it is it, it, it's almost like psychological warfare that's happening for a lot of this book but also there's a lot of like history in it about the history of brooklyn um and the history of like um gentrification and of um black communities in the us um and the kind of repeated forced um like what's the word dispossession of communities um of black communities um and the kind of it's all about the patterns of history as well i think the one thing i didn't love about it was that there is a kind of a kind of romance at the center of the book as well um and i understand why it was there a really crucial part for cindy's character is that she um doesn't allow herself to depend on anybody um and kind of that process of breaking down barriers is really crucial for her but i mean so sydney is a black woman from this community um and her love interest is um a white man who is who has moved in as a kind of you know part of the like the people benefit benefiting from um the dispossession of the black community so a lot of it felt like she was kind of educating him about like why racism is bad um and that was a bit weird it didn't really feel like that in that like as simple terms but it kind of verged on it um and i wasn't hugely keen on that like plot device but also i can't really imagine how the book would work without it i just think it was it was kind of borderline for me anyway i've talked about that book for a long time um and we need to move on to the last one which is because of you by dawn french um i did listen to the audiobook of this but i have it um in physical form because i got sent the entire women's prize long list <laughs> so you start off on um new year's day on the millennium um and two babies are born um and it basically follows the families of these children um and their parents um i don't want to tell too much about like what happens because i mean what happens is it's about like a third of the book what happens on that one day basically i really enjoyed this it's very emotional um it's funny in a lot of places there are a lot of like really witty moments um and there are a lot of like th there's some there's like a really totally diabolical um tory politician in this who was hilarious to read about love that but i think it was overwritten slightly it could be about 150 pages shorter um at least because there are moments that dawn french like dwells on that you're like you could have literally said that in half the words like she gives you the point and then she gives it again and she gives it again and you're like yeah we get it thank you um and sometimes it works but sometimes like by about halfway through i was like come on okay i, I like let's just keep going um and this is like a long book it's about 400 pages and it just didn't need to be and i think there are some really beautiful moments like where she does move things move through things a bit quicker um that 
really make it like to really show what it could have been um because like there are, there's a moment where one of the daughters who is born on new year's day is it kind of goes through her life um in sort of stages and it's so beautiful like it kind of gives like a couple of sentences that sort of sum her up at like every few years um and but they just give you like a very short snapshot of what she was at that age um and then moves on and it kind of you get like the whole character from just those little bits this is also really inventive like there's so many little details that just felt so real um with the characters and i did really enjoy getting to know them all but yeah anyway i read it it was a fun time i finished the audio book in like two days um like i was listening to it partly because i wanted to finish it before i filmed my wrap up but also it was just very easy to listen to and i enjoyed it so there you go that is september um only well five books it's not that bad i thought it was only gonna be about three at one point in exciting news it's not that exciting for anyone but me but um when i finished this it pushed my tbr my physical tbr down to 100 books amazing wow um and i said that i wouldn't be buying any books um until my tbr was below 100 um i did break that because i got this book <laughs> Love and Other Thought Experiments by Sophie Ward. Um, I bought this from Kieran um, from Katie Books and just because he was like, you know, does anyone want a book? And I was like, yeah, I do actually. But also my pre-order um, of Jen Campbell's new book, um, The Sister Who Ate Her Brothers, um, arrived a week early <laughs> for some reason. Um, and so, yeah, both of those arrived today. Um, and I finished the Dawn French yesterday. So for about like, I don't know, 12 hours, um, not even that, cause I finished Dawn French at like midnight. So I don't know, for about 10 hours, my TBR was at a hundred um, and now it is a hundred and two, but it's fine. It's fine. We're making progress. Um, anyway, thank you very much for watching. Um, I don't think I have anything else to say. Wow, that's, that's new. Oh, one more thing. Um, I'm just about starting my third year of university. Ha! Terrifying. Um, so if the uploads get a bit... I mean, I have, they have been a bit all over the place, but um, if I just disappear for a bit, um, don't worry about me. I'll be fine. Um, I'm just, you know, lots and lots of reading to do. <sighs> anyway, thank you very much for watching. I will hopefully see you soon.